Assalamu alaikum. This is Sharup Mojumdar welcoming you all to the English news from BTV Chotogram. Let's begin with the headlines. Nation observes Martyred Intellectuals Day. President Muhammad Shahbuddin and Chief Advisor Professor Mahmud Yunus pay rich tributes at Mirpur Martyred Intellectuals Memorial. Different political, socio cultural, and professional organizations, as well as people from all walks of life, pay homage at Martyred Intellectuals Memorial. Martyred Intellectuals Day, observed in Chotogram through paying due homage to martyrs and different programs. People in Port City flocking to buy winter clothes at markets and roadside shops with sudden fall in temperature. Thousands take to streets of Seoul celebrating impeachment of South Korea's President Yoon Suk Yeol. And ICC Champions Trophy to be held on hybrid model as PCB and BCCI reach an agreement. Those were the headlines. Now moving on to the details. Today is 14th December, the Martyred Intellectuals Day. The day is the most poignant day in the history of the country's independence and struggle for freedom. This day, December 14, 1971, is a day of profound sorrow as the nation had lost its best intellectuals on the brink of final victory of the War of Liberation. At the end of the nine-month blood-stained liberation war, when the people of the entire country were on the verge of the final victory, the members of Razakars, Al-Badur, Al-Shams and the Peace committee indulged in the massacre of intellectuals on that day. This barbaric act aimed at depriving the nation of its brightest minds shocked both the country and the world. On the occasion of the day, President Mohammad Shahbuddin and Chief Advisor Professor Mohammad Yunus paid rich tributes to the martyred intellectuals by placing wreaths at Martyred Intellectuals Memorial at Mirpur in the capital. First President Mohammad Shahbuddin paid tributes by placing wreaths at the memorial. After placing wreaths, the president stood in solemn silence for some time as a mark of respect to the memories of the great heroes who sacrificed their lives for the cause of the country and the nation at the fag end of the War of Liberation in 1971. A smartly turned out contingent of Bangladesh Army presented the state salute. The bugle played the last post. President Mohammad Shahbuddin exchanged greetings with invited guests the war-wounded freedom fighters and family members of the martyred intellectuals. Later, Chief Advisor Professor Mohamed Yunus paid his respects by laying a wreath at the memorial. After laying the wreath, the Chief Advisor observed a moment of solemn silence there. A smartly turned out contingent of the Bangladesh Army rendered the state salute. The bugle also played the last post. Later, Chief Advisor Professor Mohamed Yunus engaged in cordial exchanges with invited guests, including war-wounded freedom fighters and the family members of the martyred intellectuals. Chief Justice Advisor's Cabinet Secretary, chiefs of the three services, political leaders and high civil and military officials were present. Meanwhile, after paying tributes by the President and Chief Advisor, different political, social, cultural and professional organizations, as well as people from all walks of life, paid homage to the martyred intellectuals. After tributes by Head of State and Head of Government, Chief Justice and other Justices paid homage to the martyred intellectuals followed by Liberation War Affairs Advisor, along with war-maimed valiant freedom fighters and family members of valiant freedom fighters. Thousands of people started thronging the martyred intellectuals' memorial in the capital's Mirpur early in the morning. At that time, all voiced for building Bangladesh free from all kinds of discriminations. At that time, law advisor 
Dr. Asif Nuzrul said, efforts are underway to turn Bangladesh into a new country free from discriminations. Chief Advisor's Press Secretary said, the country is going ahead with the dreams of July mass movement. BNP Secretary General Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alamgir, along with leaders and activists of his party, paid floral tributes to the martyred intellectuals. Later, he said BNP will build a discrimination-free country with the spirit of those sacrifice their lives. Meanwhile, advisor on liberation war affairs, various student youth organizations, including the anti-discrimination student movement, various social, cultural, political groups, and common people paid tributes at the martyred intellectuals' memorials in Mirpur and Rai Bajar of the capital. A long queue of people from all walks of life was seen outside the memorial, and many people were found standing quietly in front of the graves of the martyrs after paying respect. Many people were also seen praying for the slain heroes of the nation, bringing a solemn atmosphere to the place. At this time, various parties and civil society expressed their hopes and convictions for building a prosperous and non-communal Bangladesh. Meanwhile, on the occasion of Martyred Intellectuals Day, people of Chattogram paid their respects to the nation's bravest sons. Floral tributes were offered at the Pahartuli Martyred Intellectuals Memorial by the City Corporation, various educational institutions and numerous social and cultural organizations. Following the tribute, Chattogram City Corporation Mayor Dr. Shadat Hussain emphasized the importance of preserving the historic killing grounds in honor of the martyrs. He also highlighted the need to commemorate the sacrifices made in July and August to overthrow the fascist. Besides, family members of the martyrs urged the government to preserve the memories of the intellectuals and to ensure that the true history of the liberation war is conveyed to the younger generation. Meanwhile, a discussion meeting organized by Chattogram District Administration was held on the occasion of Martyred Intellectuals Day. Deputy Commissioner Farida Khanum presided over the meeting, where civic leaders, media personalities and officials of the district administration also spoke. The speakers called upon everyone to present the true history of the sacrifice and consciousness of the nation's best sons, martyred intellectuals, to the coming generations. Business in warm clothes in Chotogram has been gaining momentum as people have started to flock to different markets of the city with sudden fall of temperature. Visiting different city markets, our correspondent found that most of the warm clothes outlets are crowded with customer. Well of buyers rush to new market, Sanma Ocean City, Mimi Supermarket, Afmi Plaza, Chotogram Shokim Complex, Riazuddin Bajar and Tamakundu Lane. Buyers are found in plenty at the showrooms of some branded fashion houses in these markets. People from low- and middle-income groups were seen rushing to the makeshift shops on the footpaths in different thoroughfares in Chagbajar, Sholoshahur Gate No. 2, Newmarket, Underkilla and Laldiki areas. Now, international news. Thousands on the streets of Seoul are celebrating after South Korean MPs voted to impeach President Yoon suk yeol Yoon has been suspended while the Prime Minister is serving as acting president. The Constitutional Court now has six months to decide whether to sustain his impeachment. Yoon is the second conservative president in a row to be impeached in South Korea. Park ge yoon was removed from office in 2017. The motion was carried after some members of Yoon's People Power Party joined the opposition parties, which control 192 seats in the 300-member National Assembly, clearing the two-thirds threshold needed for impeachment. The number of lawmakers supporting impeachment was 204, with 85 against three abstentions and eight invalid ballots. Although suspended, Yoon remains in office. The Constitutional Court will decide whether to remove him sometime in the next six months. 
If Yoon is removed from office, a snap election will be called. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres is deeply concerned over the hundreds of Israeli airstrikes on Syria, saying there is an urgent need to de-escalate violence on all fronts throughout the country, his spokesman said. Meanwhile, United States National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has defended Israel's extensive attacks on Syria, saying Israeli forces are trying to neutralize potential threats. Israel has denied media reports that its troops have taken control of further Syrian territory, saying its soldiers are only operating in the occupied Golan Heights buffer zone to protect Israeli civilians. Jordan will host a crisis summit on Syria over the weekend to be attended by top diplomats from Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Lebanon, Egypt, UAE, Bahrain, Qatar, Turkey, U.S., European Union and the U.N. The U.N. envoy for Syria says images emerging from the notorious Sednaya prison and other detention facilities show the unimaginable barbarity suffered by Syrians for years. Palestinian authorities have said that at least 33 Palestinians have killed and wounded more than 50 people in an Israeli strike on the Nusayrat refugee camp in central Gaza as Israel continues to conduct devastating attacks across the Strip. The government media office in Gaza called the Thursday attack a barbaric and heinous massacre, noting that most of those killed hailed from the al-Sheikh Ali family. Medics told the news agency that Israeli fire struck a postal office in Nusayrat sheltering displaced Palestinian families as well as nearby houses. Photographs from the scene show young children coated with dust and blood in the rubble of collapsed building. Now news on sports. Cricket. After a long and drawn-out deliberation process, Pakistan Cricket Board PCB and the Board of Control for Cricket in India BCCI have agreed on a hybrid model for the upcoming ICC Champions Trophy, which the ICC has also approved. India will play all three of their group stage matches in Dubai, which would include the much-anticipated India-Pakistan clash. The semi-final and final are also to take place at the UAE. However, if India get eliminated in the group stage, the semi-final and final will instead be held in Lahore and Rawalpindi in Pakistan. It was also decided that Pakistan would not travel to India in the 2026 ICC T20 World Cup, which will be hosted jointly by India and Sri Lanka, and they would play their group stage matches in Colombo. The 2025 Champions Trophy is scheduled to take place from February 19th to February to March 9th. Rangpur, Barishal, Dhaka Metro and Chattogram divisions won their respective games in the National Cricket League T20 today. Rangpur division defeated Silet by five wickets in the first match of the day. Held in Silet, batting first, Silet collected 120 runs for six wickets in 20 overs. In response, Rangpur collected 124 runs for five wickets in 15 overs and four balls. Barishal Division beat Ratshahi by five wickets in the second match of the day. Batting first, Ratshahi collected 184 runs for five wickets in 20 overs. In reply, Barishal collected a winning 188 runs for five wickets in 19 overs. Dhaka Metro defeated Kulna by six runs in the third match of the day. Batting first, Dhaka Metro collected 146 runs for nine wickets. In response, Kulna managed to score 140 runs for eight wickets. Chotogram Division beat Dhaka by 10 wickets in the fourth match of the day. Batting first, Dhaka were all out for 64 runs. In reply, Chotogram Division scored a winning 65 runs, losing no wicket.